Good morning. It is Good Friday, the day that we remember the death of our Lord and Savior on the cross. It is a day of pain, sorrow, and anguish, but also a day of remarkable love. Let me begin today with a word of prayer. Merciful God, your Son was lifted up on the cross to draw all people to himself. Grant that we who have been born out of his wounded side may at all times find mercy in him. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. This day is a difficult one for us as Christians. We remember all of the pain and suffering that our Lord endured on our behalves. We try to envision this day from the standpoint of the disciples standing there on the hillside watching as Jesus and two other criminals are crucified as a public spectacle for all to see. Jesus' day was a difficult one, to say the least. It started with Pilate bringing Jesus before the crowds and asking who they wanted Pilate to release. It was a tradition during the Passover that Pilate would release one criminal of the crowd's choice. He kept asking if he should release Jesus, and the crowds kept crying out, Crucify him! crucify him. The chief priests had worked very hard and the Pharisees throughout the week to turn the crowds against Jesus. And those crowds that were so exuberant on Palm Sunday as he triumphantly rode into Jerusalem, many of them had expected a revolution that had not come. And thus they kept crying out, crucify him. And finally, Pilate gave in. Jesus was beaten, whipped, and there was a crown of thorns placed upon his head. He was exhausted. He was in agony. He knew what it was to experience rejection and abuse at the hands of this world. He was then made to carry his cross before the crowds to Golgotha. Golgotha's name means the skull. It was a gruesome place where many crucifixions took place. As he drug his cross along, he got more and more exhausted from the beatings that he had taken. He, he fell three different times. Finally, a man named Simon of Cyrene was called upon to carry the cross for Jesus. Jesus does encounter the women of Jerusalem and wishes them well and gives them a blessing as they cry and weep for him. He is nailed to the cross. The nails go right through his flesh, his, his hands and his ankles. You can imagine the excruciating pain and the cross is lifted up. Pilate had ordered a sign to be put at the top of Jesus' cross that said the King of the Jews. The chief priests protested against this, but Pilate's response was, I have written what I have written. And so as Jesus hung on that cross, a placard hung above him that read, The King of the Jews. The pain in the crucifixion is as much from your chest as it is from your flesh. As Jesus hung there, it was getting more and more difficult for him to be able to pull himself up and he started to sag, his shoulders, his chest, his body began to sag. And as that happened, 
his diaphragm got pushed by his ribs and it became much more difficult for him to breathe. <clears throat> Throughout the course of the next several hours, this struggle continued. As I mentioned earlier, there were two other criminals crucified with him, one on either side. One of them was riding him, saying, if you are really who you say you are, just get us down from here. The other criminal, though, answered and said, why are you giving him such a hard time? We deserve to be up here, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he turned to Jesus and asked, Remember me in your kingdom. Jesus promised that criminal, Today you will be with me in paradise. A moment of grace and mercy from the cross. Jesus spotted his mother and told one of the disciples to care for her from now on. He prayed for the people that were down below mocking him. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Think about that. Jesus praying for those who had put him on the cross, extending mercy to them, even as they stood below and mocked him. It truly is a love that is beyond worldly comprehension. As time passed and Jesus became weaker, he eventually said, I am thirsty. And they offered him hyssop with vinegar on it. And eventually, as he was beginning to take his final breaths, he cried out, it is finished, and gave up his spirit. The guard below pierced his side to make sure that he was gone. And then they took him down from the cross and took him to a tomb where they laid him and rolled a stone in front of the tomb. The tomb belonged to Joseph of Arimathea. Joseph willingly gave the tomb to his Lord. It should be noted that according to the Gospels at the time that Jesus took his last breath, the earth shook, the clouds turned dark, thunder rumbled through the land, the creation itself cried out in agony in those moments. We know that Jesus was left in the tomb where he would lay for hours until that Sunday morning. But for now, knowing what is to come, we stay in this moment. We stay in the moment of Christ's death. We stay in the moment of the tomb with Jesus sealed in, in the darkness, completely separated from the world. We keep vigil this night and tomorrow as we await the glory of new life to come. Almighty God, look with loving mercy on your human family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed, to be given over to the hands of sinners, and to suffer death on the cross. Bless us this day and always. Amen.